Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a crime drama film, Papillon. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Around the year 1931, in Paris, a man named Papillon, who is a safe cracker, steals from a safe box. He goes out from the window as soon as he's done and heads to a party, where inside a room, a couple of men punish someone using violence. Papillon is outside waiting for a woman, the same bar girl who's dancing inside the party to entertain men. Papillon gives the bar girl jewelry from what he stole. The bar girl is about to go back in, as someone does not want her to leave early. Papillon stops her and invites her to have some fun. An unknown suspicious man sees the couple and the jewelry in the woman's hand. Oblivious to the man, Papillon and the bar girl spend a fantastic but fast hormone night with one another. Later that morning, Papillon and the bar girl talk about their future in bed. They almost fight as she doesn't agree to wait for six months for them to settle down. She gets out of the bed. Suddenly, someone knocks on their door. The police officers arrest Papillon for the murder of the man from last night that was being punished. Papillon is in surprise as he did not murder anyone since he was with the bar girl for the whole night. The police tells him that an eyewitness identified Papillon to be the murderer of the man. The policemen drag him without giving him any chance to explain himself. The bar girl claims his innocence, but the officers don't believe her smelly bullshit as she's known to be a whore. The bar girl visits Papillon inside the prison. He's charged with a life sentence for the murder. She wants Papillon to appeal the charge, but he knows he's been framed up. That's why he plans on breaking out. The time for visitation is up, so the officer forces her to leave. Papillon shows annoyance by kicking the bars. A man named Jula talks to him as he sees Papillon's frustrations. He tells Papillon that he needs money in order to escape. Jula points to a man named Louis, a millionaire. An assembly occurs to orient the convicts about what life they will be looking forward to, since they're being transferred to a new place. After they serve their full term in prison, they will remain in South America as workers for a period equal to their original sentence. Papillon meets Luis. His life is in danger as every convict wants his money. As they're being moved into new cells on a big ship, Papillon takes that chance to offer Luis security in exchange for funding his escape. Luis declines his offer, so Papillon goes back to Julat. Julat offers to team up for escape, but Papillon declines. Later that night, as convicts sleep peacefully, a crime happens. The one sleeping beside Louis is killed because of his money. Louis witnesses the crime, but remains silent. As soon as the guards see the lifeless convict, they take away the body without finding the killer. That morning, Louis approaches Papillon and reconsiders the offer. He wants Papillon to keep him alive, so he can arrange any help Papillon needs to escape. But Papillon doesn't want Louis to come with him when the escape happens. Fortunately, Louis has no intention of escaping, as his wife is already working on his appeal. Later on, the killer goes to where Louis is. Papillon attacks the killer to prevent him from getting to Louis. The killer and Papillon have a fight, and this catches the attention of the guards. They stop the fighting. Right after that, the guards bring the killer to the infirmary and move Papillon and Louis to the first-class prison on the ship as punishment. The next day, Papillon is in another cell, as his hands and feet are chained. He's given water, which he needs to lick in order to drink. Later, the convicts exit the ship as they have arrived on the island. Julat plans to go to the hospital. He cuts his own leg, so he is taken to the hospital. Louis stays close to Papillon. They go inside the gate of their new prison and see guards in every corner with their guns, as well as the warden, who warns them of the consequences if they ever think of escaping. The next morning, they wake up to the sound of shooting as someone tries to escape from the hospital. As Papillon and Louis are being assigned by the officers, they decide that they have to be always together. Papillon and Louis are assigned together to Route Zero. They proceed to work in Route Zero, carrying and moving tons of rocks. Louis slacks off, making another worker furious. Louis loses the money he's been keeping inside a small capsule, hidden inside his anus the entire time. But luckily, Papillon finds it on the ground at the right time, before a prison guard can find it. While eating, Papillon and Louis talk about the money in their own language, so no one can understand the conversation. A man named Cellier, who sits beside them, looks suspiciously at them. As Papillon and Cellier converses, someone suddenly approaches Louis, threatening him to give his money. Papillon approaches them too, and pushes the person harshly. The prison guards see the situation, so they shoot to stop and intimidate them, announcing that their break is over. As the convicts line up to push the carts, the prison guard sees a cart filled with prostitutes owned by a fat man who seems to be stuck. The prison guards help them by letting them ride the cart that Papillon and the other convicts are pushing. Papillon makes a deal with the man to help him get to the coast. As they're showering, Papillon feels wary of other convicts seeming to move closer to them. He signals Louis to be alert. It turns out they are being ambushed by the same person that threatened Luis on their break. 
Papillon attacks them first, but he gets outnumbered by the enemies. He gets injured, but he successfully wins over them before the guards take charge of the situation. Later that night, Luis realizes he will not survive until his appeal, so he changes his mind and wants to escape with Papillon. Papillon does not want to include Luis, as that is not what they originally agreed to. The next morning, as they are in assembly, they witness Julot being executed. He is a beheaded for trying to escape by stabbing the guards and running to the jungle. Papillon and Luis are the ones in charge of carrying Julot's lifeless body. They carry it to the woods, and Luis is frozen as he sees Julot's blood. The prison guard wants them to continue, but Luis doesn't move. The guard punishes him, making Papillon smash a rock on the prison guard's head. Luis is left behind, and Papillon uses this as an opportunity to escape and run to the jungle. The other guards see him running, so they start shooting in Papillon's direction. Papillon manages to go to the river, where he jumps in. He's having a hard time because of his injury, but he still continues to swim. Luis is taken back to the prison. Night comes, and Papillon manages to go where the man he made a deal with. The man is seen there with his boat, but Papillon doesn't have money as Luis isn't there with him, so he promises to pay the man once he goes back to Paris. It turns out, the fat man is a traitor. The guards are already behind Papillon, ready to capture him. This implies that even if Papillon has money, the man will still turn him in, since the warden will pay him double their deal. Papillon surrenders and is sent back to prison. The warden orders to transfer him to the island of St. Joseph, where he'll spend the next two years. They put Papillon there, where there's nothing but silence. The four corners are all walls, and the only source of light will come from above. Morning comes, he peeps in the small opening on the door, where prisoners receive the food. He is given nothing but soup as both his food and drink. A warden comes inside his cell. The warden uses violence on him, to the point that he bleeds, just to teach him a lesson to never peep again. As Papillon sleeps, someone places a bucket inside his cell. There is a coconut inside, and a note saying that every day there will be a coconut in his bucket from now on. Papillon eats the coconut with relief, as he mentions the name of Luis. The days pass with him exercising, eating the coconut, and sleeping. Until one day, his bucket is checked by a prison guard. The guard finds out that someone got paid to send it to Papillon's cell. The person who brought it gets killed. The warden visits him and forces him to speak up and admit who sent the coconuts. Papillon doesn't speak, so the warden orders his men to put him in half rations. The next morning, the warden visits him again and wakes him with soup that has meat in it. He only wants Papillon to tell him the name of the person who sent the coconuts. Papillon remains silent and makes the warden angry. The warden orders the guards to put Papillon in darkness for the remainder of his sentence. In complete utter darkness, Papillon starts losing his sanity as he attempts to strangle himself. He hallucinates a safe and tries to open it, but it does not. He slams his hand in frustration. Still hallucinating, Luis as a mime appears and talks to him, saying that this is a good escape. The scene shifts and shows that he is still in the dark cell, as he imagines the safe opening on its own. This probably helps Papillon to keep himself sane. Two years later, Papillon is pulled from his cell, as his sentence is already finished. Louis is seen writing his name on a desk, when the warden pats him on the shoulder and smiles. Louis stands up and leaves to get into the prison hospital. He spots Papillon. Louis apologizes to Papillon for putting him in that place, and for not coming sooner. Papillon is silent at first, but as soon as Louis reveals that his appeal runs into some problem, and his wife marrying his lawyer, Papillon answers. They are still friends. Louis tells Papillon that his life would have been much easier if he simply gave them Louis's name, but Papillon never did. He has given that a thought, but his loyalty to Louis was first. Papillon still hopes he can escape. Louis gives Papillon a plan to escape, but they will still need a boat. Louis clarifies that he wants to be included in the escape plan, which Papillon agrees with this time. Louis will still be the one financing the escape. As soon as they're done with their conversation, Papillon acts like an insane person. They make it seem as if they are now on good terms. Louis leaves, while telling the people in the hospital that Papillon is a madman. The staff tries to calm Papillon down by giving him pills and water, which he spits as soon as they leave. Later that evening, Papillon includes Maturette in their escape plan, another prisoner who will be in charge of distracting the turnkey. The next morning, Louis, together with Cellier, the one who'll get them the boat, meets Papillon and Maturette. Cellier will be able to stay in the hospital, as he cut himself on purpose to get in. They reiterate all their plans. They discreetly pass the money that they will need to pay for the boat and the sedatives to put on the guards' coffees. Just when Louis is about to leave the hospital's gate, a prisoner patient tries to get the sedatives from him. Cellier worries Louis will ruin their plan as he gets into a fight with the patient, but Papillon reassures him that Louis will not ruin it. Louis manages to get back the sedatives after getting a punch. The filming for the politicians hosted by the warden starts one day. This is the chance that they've been waiting for to escape. Louis puts sedatives on the drinks and serves them. 
He is about to proceed with the plan, but a prison guard calls him to serve. In the hospital, Maturette distracts the turnkey, as Papillon and Sillier get closer from behind. The two dip the turnkey with their weapons made from the bed frame legs. Maturette is furious with the turnkey taking advantage of him, so he kicks his ass aggressively, making a noise that the guards hear. The guard heads upstairs to check the noise when he suddenly passes out, implying that the sedatives worked. Papillon and the two go downstairs and attack the remaining guards that are still conscious. Just as they are about to get out of the gate, they see Louis still serving the guest outside. It suddenly rains, so the guests come in and the power turns off. They are in a dilemma about whether to go or wait for Louis as he is still outside. Papillon persistently waits for Louise, but the other two want to go already. Just in time, Louise arrives with the keys he stole. They'll be moving in the dark, so no one will see them. The four proceed on their way out. They need to jump to escape. All three manage to jump, except for Louise. As he is about to jump, the lights turn on. They rush him, so that he will not be seen. He jumps and lands awfully, resulting in him having broken legs. Cellier wants to leave Louis, but Papillon still insists they have to include him as he has the money. They run and move to get into their boat. On their way there, the same traitor who busted Papillon when he first escaped stops them with his gun. He also has his men with guns, stopping the escape of the four. Luckily, the man Cellier hired to get the boat comes in and paves their way out, though they have to pay him. They manage to get on the boat and sail. As they're already in the middle of the ocean, they realize that they have to lighten their weight as the boat cannot handle it. Cellier suggests Louise get out of the boat as he will not survive any longer, but Papillon doesn't want to sacrifice anyone. Just when they thought everything will sail smoothly, a storm comes, so they need to decide immediately. Papillon still wants to protect Louise, so he and Cellier fight each other. Maturette attacks Cellier first, who's approaching Louise, but ends up flying in the water. All this fight leads to Cellier's death as Louise stabs him. After that, the remaining throw out Cellier's body and fight the storm. Morning comes, Papillon wakes up in Colombia with tribe people. An English nun appears, claiming they know where they came from, and they are ready to accept them as long as they repent. Papillon and Louise will be moving separately as their deal is already done. Papillon insists he'll go back to Paris, while Louise and Maturette will be staying there. Papillon is about to start his journey without Louise, but returns back as soon as he sees a car approaching the island. He is worried Louis and Maturette's life will be in danger, so he insists they go leave with him. Just when Papillon assists Louis out, he gets shot, and the prison guards capture the two of them. The nun turns out to be talking about prison when she said to repent. She's the one that surrendered them to the warden. Five years later, Papillon is still in prison and is about to be moved to the Devil's Island. He is welcomed by odd people, searching for food from him. There he meets Louis. It turns out, the warden straight out put Louis on the Devil's Island. Louis guides Papillon on the Devil's Island. The next day, Louis wakes Papillon up. He sees a lifeless body being hanged. Papillon still thinks of escaping. He's calculating if he can jump off the cliff and survive the ocean. He forms a plan and tells Louis that they can manage the ocean as long as they mind the waves. Louis agrees to his plan and they prepare the materials they need to survive. Louis slips a butterfly painting inside a bottle. The next day, they go to the cliff. As they are about to jump, Louis reveals that he will be staying behind. They bid each other goodbye and are ready to go their separate ways. Papillon jumps off the cliff and makes it. It is emotional for the two, as Louis probably decided to stay, so Papillon won't have to worry about his safety anymore. The films end with Papillon returning back to France in 1969. He risks coming back despite still being wanted, in order for his memoir to be published in France. The butterfly that Louis drew is in there. Papillon wrote everything he knew and everything that had happened when he was serving in prison. When asked if it is Papillon's story, he answers that is the story of a lot of men, probably pertaining to all prisoners who go through the same suffering. In the end, after learning his story, France decides to allow him to return home, and for the remainder of his life, he lives as a free man. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.